You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We're continuing our international series today. We stay stateside today, though, um, talking with one of our new missionaries who's preparing to go abroad. So we're looking forward to that conversation in just a moment. Thank you to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, Hayden Rensner. She's serving the Lord in the Czech Republic, preparing to serve <laughs> in the Czech Republic these days. Hayden, thanks so much for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. Yes, thank you. So this is not our first time chatting about serving internationally. We've chatted in the past when you've served in some short-term settings and uh, doing some virtual shadowing as well. And uh, now you've been given to serve the Lord in the Czech Republic. Looking forward to learning more about what that means for you. So what led up to you serving internationally? I'm going to guess that some of these short-term opportunities (laughs) had something to do with that. Yes. Since we have talked um, in the past, or I've been on this before, definitely my short-term international experiences really opened my eyes to what God is doing through his people all over the world and in all the different regions and areas of the world. So during my time in college, I was able to have two short-term experiences in Africa and a six-week teaching experience in China. And so all those experiences combined really, like I said, opened my eyes to what God is doing around the world and got me thinking that maybe that is something I would be interested in or could possibly do full-time after graduating. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the the people influential in you going on this journey uh, and on this path to serving internationally in more than just short term mission capacity? Oh, yes, I'd say I've definitely had a couple professors in college that have had a big influence on on my mission, my missionary work and going overseas and just kind of being mentors throughout all of those experiences and kind of helping me talk through them and process them, as well as team members like the two trips that I went on in Africa, team members that I met through those trips that I've been able to stay in contact with, and then also just another group of people to process things with and to keep learning together and growing in our knowledge about the places we've served and where other people are serving and just our overall knowledge of mission work in general. I think sometimes when we think someone is given to serve as a missionary that, you know, they they receive their assignment and then boom, we just plant them in that (laughs) new culture and new country and they're ready to go. But it's not quite like that, is it? Can you share with us that process, what that process has looked like for you from considering, you know, and, and even, you know, applying to serve as a missionary, and then what that preparation, then once you, you've you made that, uh, once you've been uh, assigned, and then uh, what that process looks like from there as well. So let's, let's go back and, and just paint that timeline for mm-hmm. us of what that looks like. Okay. So like starting with applying or starting with receiving the assignment? Let's start with applying and, and okay. apply, what that process was like when you knew that it was something you were interested in. How did you go about that? Yeah, so um, kind of my junior year of college, I had started those initial conversations with recruitment people from the LCMS office and starting to have those conversations with people. And so once senior year, I kind of reached that point where I had talked to enough people and considered it long enough that I was like, yes, this is what I want to do. I want to apply. And so senior year, I applied and then went through went through a lot of different things, a theological assessment and psychological and different questionnaires that were part of the application process. And then nearing towards graduation, I was told that I would be given an assignment, but I wasn't quite sure where that would be yet. And then two days after graduation, I received the assignment to the Czech Republic. So it was kind of an ongoing process all throughout my last year of college, going through all the different steps. Mm -hmm. 
And so uh, what has that process been like now that uh, you have that assignment? Where does that go from there of, of obviously you don't just, you know, get on a plane and go to the Czech Republic <laughs> right away. What is it like then once you have that assignment? What kind of preparation goes into into those next steps? Right. So we had a week of training in St. Louis in July. And so that was an initial training, meeting all the other new missionaries. And then the new missionaries, all of us together, we went through training in St. Louis. And then when we were done with that week, we went through ongoing training and seminars online throughout um, the course of the next month. And then in August, we had our final week of in-person training in St. Louis, as well as the sending service. So we kind of graduated, I guess, from from training and, you know, we're all ready to go. And so, and now we are, are still going through different missiology modules and continuing education. But after our last week of training, we really focused on network support. So making church visits and connecting with congregations. And that's the stage that I'm at right now as I prepare to actually deploy and go to be in the Czech Republic. So presently you're in the network support stage. What does that mean? I mean <laughs> we could I, we could take some guesses, but for our listeners not familiar with this process, what does that look like? Yes. So in this stage, you um, are making visits to congregations or um, that could be Sunday morning, Bible study hours or Bible study groups. And so it just looks like connecting with churches. A lot of the time it's mostly churches, but just also connecting with people who are interested in supporting mission work um, and who want to learn more about the work that you'll be doing. And so it's really just sharing your story and then leaving it up to the listeners. And if God calls them or they feel so inclined to support or to partner with you in this ministry, then they are able to do so and you're able to give them that information that is needed. But it's a lot of visiting churches, doing Bible study hours, just sharing the story. And it has been so much fun. I'm, I'm honestly a little sad that when it comes to a close, because it's been, it's been so much fun to visit churches, meet new people, talk with pastors. It's just been such an uplifting and great experience. Where have you been able to travel to to do network support? I know this is probably still an odd time to be doing a lot of uh, traveling through through a lot of states, but where have you been able to get to to do your network support? I've spent um, a month in Illinois. Uh, that's where I grew up. So I have quite a few connections and know quite a few people in that state. And then I was in South Dakota for about three weeks. And two days ago, I just arrived here to North Dakota. So this is where I'll kind of be finishing up my my tour, I guess. <laughs> now, part of that also involves a, a missionary presentation. Is that is that right? So that you're sharing the story to all of these churches? Yes. So we share our, share the story, yep, through a presentation. So what goes into creating that presentation, especially since you haven't actually been on the field yet? What what goes into that presentation and, and sharing the story of, of what you're going to be doing? Right. So the first week of training in St. Louis, we mostly focused on making and building our individual presentations. And so we were able to work with communication people from um, St. Louis who helped us develop our presentations and structure it in a way that is going to engage people and engage an audience. But then also it looked a lot like talking to uh, missionaries. I had several conversations with missionaries who are on the field already in the Czech Republic, talking to missionaries who have been on the field in the Czech Republic but have come off, and hearing their stories and their ministry efforts because since I haven't been to the Czech Republic before, a lot of sharing my story and my presentation is talking about what I will be doing. But then I'm also able to share stories about what has been done and the work that's currently happening that I will be joining, but that has been already going on. And so I was able to talk with a lot of missionaries from the Czech Republic and hear their stories and then incorporate those into 
my presentation to give people a glimpse of the work that's being done even before I myself am able to join in on it. So it sounds like you will have some colleagues that you'll be serving alongside in the Czech Republic. Who are some of the people you get to work with even remotely now, but who will you get to work with once you've landed in the Czech Republic? Yes. So two of the main people that I will be working with are Ben Helge, and he is my supervisor. He'll be my direct supervisor once I get over there. And then Chelsea Irwin. I will actually be living with her. So I'll be moving in with her and she'll kind of be showing me the ropes of everything. So Ben and Chelsea are the two people that I've had the most conversations with and who I'll be the most closely connected to once I get over. And so you've had a chance, I gather, to connect with them virtually and and learn quite a bit about what's happening there and the, the work that they've been doing. So we'll we'll learn more about that in just a moment. I think we're, we'll we'll take our break now and we'll come back in just a little bit and learn about what you will get to be doing in the Czech Republic when you make your way there. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. We're talking with Hayden Rensner today, who's preparing to serve the Lord in the Czech Republic. We'll continue the conversation in just a moment. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golsa. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Today we're talking with Hayden Rensner. She's preparing to serve the Lord in the Czech Republic, given to serve as a missionary. And we are just privileged to have the opportunity to talk with Hayden before gets on the plane and heads to the Czech mm-hmm. Republic, traveling in the States right now, doing network support, gathering that support so that the Lord's work can be done in the Czech Republic. Now, Hayden, you mentioned that uh, you'll be serving alongside Ben and Chelsea when you get to the Czech Republic. What are some of the things that you'll get to be doing and what is some of the work that's already been done um, by those who are already serving there? Yeah, so the work that I will get to do, I will be working with the Riga Luther Academy out of Latvia. So that's an online program and I'll be tutoring students in English, doing ESL type classes, through that academy. But then within the Czech Republic, I will be working with local churches and congregations to develop and offer English language learning opportunities for students and for young adults, older adults, kind of all different ages. And so those will be the two main roles that I will have. Chelsea has just finished up her two-year geo term, and so she was doing a lot of ESL outreach things as well. And so I'll kind of um, be learning from her and she'll be able to pass on some of her knowledge to me. And then Ben also does a lot of different things um, with ESL and then just connecting with churches and hosting youth groups and youth nights and bringing, drawing people into the local congregations in a lot of different ways. Now you'll be doing all of, all of this English English language classes and things. Are you are you doing any language training to serve overseas? Yes, I am currently in I think it's my fourth week of Czech classes. And so I've been taking online virtual classes once a week and then hopefully once I get to the Czech Republic I'll have a few weeks where I can be in intensive language courses. But for sure, once I get over there, I will be continuing my language learning in person with a tutor. So <laughs> how is how much of you started really learning about the Czech culture and, and things that you're going to be into once you're there? Yeah, well, I've been, Chelsea has been telling me a lot about 
the town where we live specifically. And so we're going to be living right on the border of Poland. And so the town where we live, it's kind of unique because since it is right on the border, there is kind of a mix of Czech people and Polish people or people who have Polish heritage. So I think that will be very interesting to to learn more about that culture and to kind of be be in the midst of it. So I'm um, learning a little bit about that. Also, last semester, my last semester in school, I worked with Ben and Chelsea virtually for my senior capstone project. And so I helped them do different things, teach English, lead English groups. So I was also able to meet several students from the Czech Republic who I'll be able to meet in real life now. So I am very excited about that and to form new relationships and then even meet and continue relationships I've already kind of started. What do you think is going to be most challenging about <laughs> the the transition, whether it's culture or geography, whatever it might be? What do you think is going to be most challenging for you? I think like this is probably a very basic and typical answer, but I think just being overseas for so long, like I've been on short-term trips, but just six weeks was the maximum. And so thinking of being in a new place and a new culture for that extended period of time, most of the time it's very exciting to think about, but I think sometimes it can can be a little nerve wracking and just knowing that I'll be away from family and friends and just plunge into something completely new. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's definitely a learning curve, probably for a while. How do you think your your previous experience of serving in different capacities overseas already? How do you think those will help you transition into this this new position in in a different country? I think my previous experiences in Africa and China have, of course, opened my eyes to a new culture and kind of taught me how to observe and to really take notice of different things as I play the role of observer as I'm starting to get adjusted and acclimated to a new culture. And so I think those learning experiences will help me in the Czech Republic because I think I will be more readily able to recognize um, different cultural cues maybe, or at least just step back and kind of take it all in and not not feel rushed, but just acclimate to the culture slowly and and know that there are, of course, going to be differences, but that that's gonna be okay and it's gonna be great. And I might not I might be the odd one out for a while, but it's all good. <laughs> Speaking of of cultural differences, as you've been learning about the Czech Republic and your new neighbors. What intrigues you most or what are you eager to something new to try when you get there? Oh, something new to try. Well, well, I guess I could go right to my food question (laughs) because I always love asking food questions when it comes to international conversations and culture. (laughs) You know anything about the food yet or is it just going to all be immersion your first week there? Well, Josia has told me that it's a lot of like meat and potatoes very basic basic stuff like that so it sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so one this will be a learning curve too though because i'm actually allergic to potatoes and so oh, no. i need to oh. i need to learn the check word for that so i can look out for it at the grocery stores <laughs> Wow, that's going to be challenging. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there's the first cross to bear. We've already <laughs> yes. That one out. Well, it's nice, though, that, that you get to work so closely and you already know your roommate when you get there so that you'll have some some connections. I'm sure that's going to help with that transition. Yes, definitely. So you're spending a little more time here in the States and preparing. Um, do you have any idea? Do you know when your launch date is yet? I do not know. It's I am waiting for my visa. And mm. then as soon as my visa arrives, I will hopefully be ready to go and get out and launch. And so, but <laughs> the visa can take anywhere from one to three months. So it's kind of mm. a broad timeline. But 
I'm hopeful. I'm hoping by the end of the year to get over mm-hmm. there. Have Ben and Chelsea shared with you any of the challenges that they've had to face in the the past year and a half with the pandemic? Yes, I've mostly I've had a lot of conversations with Chelsea about this because she was alone kind of when the lockdown hit and didn't have any roommates or anything. So I think for her, it was very challenging just to not have that person to talk to or to process things with. And then, of course, learning how to do ministry online, which was, of course, a challenge and a new thing kind of worldwide for everybody. But starting, she had just started to form relationships with people, and then all of a sudden, everything was over Zoom. And so I think it was very challenging for both her and Ben just to adjust to that and to come up with new outreach ideas that could be done virtually. But I think they've developed some great things. And so I'm very excited to continue working with them and learning some of their tricks because um, kind of in the world we're in right now, things could be virtual for a little while longer or a lot while longer. And so I think it's it's always going to be great to have those tools no matter what season you're in. Mm -hmm. You mentioned some of your work is going to be virtual working with a school in in Riga. Do you know how much of of these things that you'll be working on actually developed out? Did anything that 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 you're doing now develop out of out of the pandemic situations and needing to kind of pivot with with what they were doing? Oh, I am not sure about that because the Academy is an online program and I'm pretty sure that's how it was even before um, the pandemic. But definitely, they've been able to reach a lot more students and a lot more people because it's online. So students can attend from all over and not just from Latvia or from a nearby country. And so I'm, yes, I'm also definitely excited to learn more and talk with the teachers and the missionaries who have been teaching there the past couple of years and hear their advice and their insight about how how to use technology to do ministry and connect with more people. So once you have moved to the Czech Republic and got the green light and ready to go, how will you stay in touch with um, those who make up your network of support? Yes. So I am going to be producing a newsletter once a month. And so that is a great way to stay in touch and stay connected with churches and congregations. I've also talked to several churches that I've visited about, you know, FaceTiming or sending in a video every so often to just keep people updated about what's going on and the work that is being done. I also have for the technology savvy youth in the world, I have a Facebook and Instagram account where I've been documenting my network support journey and then will also be documenting my work and my time in the Czech Republic. So I love to just find whatever way works for people to stay connected with me. If that's email, newsletter, Facebook, however they feel the most comfortable or can access the most easily. I'm very excited to stay in touch with all my supporters and keep them informed about the work that is being done through their support. So Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Those are always fun, fun things to watch the the Facebooks and the Instagrams to see all the all the work that's being done uh, around the globe. What are what are you looking forward to maybe the most uh, about getting getting your feet on the ground in the Czech Republic and, and really beginning the work? Yes, I that's so hard because I just cannot wait. And so I can't I can't think of like one thing where I'm like, yes, this is their brief and I'm so excited. But I just can't wait to go and to get started and do the work that has been prepared for me. I mentioned also how I've already been able to meet a few students. And so I'm very excited to see them face to face and walk alongside them in in the groups and ministry efforts that Ben and Chelsea have already started. And yeah, just I'm just excited to go get over there and and start doing the work that God has prepared for me. Well, certainly prayers ascend for you mm-hmm. and your preparations and that visa. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> what's the, the easiest way for us to follow and, and stay up to date on what's happening with the Lord's work in the Czech Republic and, and where you're serving? Yes. Well, people can go to the LCMS website, lcms.org slash Rentsner, 
and that gets my bio and then access to my prayer card and then the prayer card will give more information as well and i think that would be the best initial way probably to to get in contact with me very good very good our guest today hayden rensner serving the lord in the czech republic Hayden, thanks so much for spending some time with us during your network support and God's blessings on the rest of your preparations. I hope you get to make it there soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golsa. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.